has roughly the same size and population, but with a completely different view on Earth and planet. Now sure, they do have parking lots, but instead of having an excess of one per person, they instead have one for every three people. Although, oh, wow. that's not the entire story, because 40% of these parking spaces are actually underground, making oh. them a off ramp for what is significantly more important. Sidewalks and bikes. <laughs> it's normal. Are so important, you only need to use some common sense. See you. Okay, so right away, one minute in, uh, that is actually kind of mind blowing from my American perspective. It is kind of a cool concept. You park all the cars or most of the cars underneath, underground, and then it's you have these clean streets with basically bicycles, foot traffic, sidewalks, footpaths, whatever you want to call them. Even uh, my small a town. Cleaner, as underground, two-store uh, underground parking in the central city. Right? Cars are a big issue. Although I live in walking distance of uh, it's an odd mix. It can be an odd mix when you're dealing with people on bicycles, downtown. scooters, and on foot, and in, you know, a Corvette. <laughs> if you have a car-based city, or country for that matter, with no bike lanes or sidewalks, you are actively excluding those who can't afford to pay thousands of dollars a year on a car from right. society, since they can't go to and from work or even to the grocery store in a safe, efficient way. And if you add to that terrible public transportation, yeah. it will... And again... Some commercials and these two. Hey, what's wrong with your ear? No, I'll fix it. Hi there. It will lead to chance like this, where you can clearly see the most popular wow. mode of transport in America that just so happens to be the car. Which you know, it, that looks like it's what about eighty-five percent, maybe ninety. Uh, that is not surprising. That is not surprising at all. Uh, I'll take that. That's definitely more than fair. Uh, I will admit it. We are a car-based. Country. It's not even yeah, you are. one city more than another. No, pretty much all our cities and even medium cities, small towns, they're mostly car based. It, it is true. That's how it works. Which isn't too surprising since America is designed for cars, not humans. It is designed for cars. Some sidewalks and bike lanes in the United States is not for cities. They are either unprotected and really scary to use or yeah. just end abruptly with no other. Yes, you'll see a lot of this. Sidewalks will just end, and it's like, oh, I've been following this for a mile, and now it ends, and it's just grass and the road. Uh, that is a problem I've seen, very common. And also, I do see in a lot of cities, <laughs> that's you have funny. bike lanes, so they're there. That's just but again, they're kind of an afterthought. I don't feel basic like the road is designed thing for them. we have just here. There inside. It is still a car dominant uh, road and intersections. And being on a bike, quite frankly, uh, would be you can really scary. walk something that I don't personally partake through in. or bike through this to country, or which is really not ideal if you want to send your kids to school on their own or to get all the way. I mean, I bike everywhere when I was a kid, and it seems like if you're under 16 in the US and therefore don't have your driver's license yet, you're practically under house arrest until your parents come home, which doesn't sound that fun to me. And I remember clearly yeah, when I visited the United States with my parents a few years back that whenever we tried to walk anywhere, it felt like we were intruding on the car's territory since we literally had to walk through various parking lots and streets with no sidewalks in sight to get to our destination just a few hundred meters away. Uh -huh. It doesn't have to be this way. See, the streets of Amsterdam, for example, are filled with pedestrians because they yeah, have look at that. that aren't at all scary to use because you feel separated from the road. Yeah, you see that flow of bicycles, way more bicycles. I've never seen that many bicycles in my life as an American. Like seeing dozens of people in one camera shot there uh, riding their bicycles smoothly and, uh, you know, presumably without much worry. Yeah, it's Netherlands kind of are famous so about kind of bicycles. Uh, also, all the people walking, you know, you'll see that in some cities. But again, it's different. This is a nice, clean setup. Everyone's kind of close, but it's not dangerous. Wow, this is a lot different than I would have thought. I knew this video was going to be interesting, but ooh, this is a little eye-opening. And that's because you are separated from the road. The most beautiful thing about Amsterdam, though, is that it's incredibly bike-friendly. 
as it's yeah. filled with designated bike lanes that don't end abruptly and are instead carefully laid out all over the city to wow. make it easy for people to commute anywhere. Amsterdam even has no call centers and even underground bike parking spaces that look pretty insane. Whoa. Something you can never find in the US. Which... Yo, that is freaking awesome. Look at that. And bike parking spaces that look pretty insane. That's so great. Never find in the US. We don't have this. I think it's unfair to compare the United States to literally but the I best know of bikes in the world. Netherlands is a flat country. We don't have uh, mountains like Sweden or Norway, but we have uh, hills and uh, steep hills. Netherlands doesn't. It's a flat country. Yeah, keep in mind, I hate to say it, but you would think at this point the U.S. is too far gone. It's like one American friend who visited here in Finland, said, when my Finnish friend collect him from airport, main airport in Finland, said we need to go quickly because there's going to be traffic jam. And when my Finnish friend said, now we are in traffic jam, you're the American started to laugh. Well within that city limit. So this uh, is I not the traffic term. There's just gone, um, 20 it is, cars. It is what it is. Because but it's different this, for this us. It's like uh, maybe California or something. Uh, it says LA here there. It kind of looks like California highways. Uh, you know, look at this. How are you going to undo this? It, it's so car based. Everyone has cars. There's like what? You got like the right lane there, on the right. Crazy. It's easy you know, to make a bike a walking opinion. way. I don't want to sound there. Minded, but that's a problem. It's so car based. Not it, on it's, there, it's but too far on the right. The thing is, and this might surprise you, not too long ago, the United States' largest cities were actually designed exactly like these European cities. Take for example Houston, that currently looks like this, with tons of space allocated to these massive parking lots. Seems like it's always been this way, but that's not the case. Because in 1920, Houston looked like this, with a lot more space for pedestrians. Mm -hmm. They could actually mm -hmm. walk around the city without fearing for their lives or feeling like they were intruding on the car's territory. This means the United States didn't design their cities to be this way, they bulldozed them to be. And while oh, European yeah. metropolitan areas are increasingly rolling back on the car's dominance with high speed trains, metros, and non automotive methods of transit, the United States is increasing their dependence on cars by expanding highways and demolishing houses, apartment complexes, businesses, and schools to fit them. Which yeah. doesn't really make any sense. I mean, if the city is expanding the number of highway lanes from 16 to 20, there is a problem. So, I've been trying to figure out why they've done this to themselves, and what actually happened. And what I found was surprising, to say the least. Here, take a look at this. In cities like Charlotte or Portland, Oregon, there is parking lot minimum that are placed in high streets, which is actually a practice adopted by many states and cities. And God, I'll admit, seeing those overhead pictures of parking lots with all the cars just flying around and like, it looks so claustrophobic. Um, as someone too, may I mention, that always has big trucks or big SUVs, uh, I feel that pain a lot because most parking spaces, even though we're in America, they still don't fit trucks properly. So you're, you're in a big vehicle and you're in these crazy, like crowded parking lots, it is a nightmare. I will admit that. And this means that a high school containing hallways, a cafeteria, an auditorium, offices, restrooms, gyms, and everything in between can be around 5,100 square feet in size, just for the buildings alone. But because of these parking lot minimums, a school this size must also have a parking lot that's half the size of the entire school. That means 2,005 square feet of space has to be allocated to parking lots and driving aisles alone. Which is absolutely insane, as this simply isn't an option in some areas. But since it's preset in many school budgets, it just leads to cramped learning spaces and an emphasis on flying cars to get to and from school. Is this it? Uh, those measurements sound off, by the way. Yeah, that is weird that they have some of these cities also on minimum. Like, oh, that's life there. Flat. 